What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we dive in into the top decks of the meta in standard best of one here in Arena. Overall, as we get closer and closer to Brothers War, we will be getting an idea of, you know, what the top decks currently are in standard, whether or not Brothers War will have a great impact on standard. But, you know, for now, until we get those new cards, we're going to take one last look at what the top decks are currently in the meta. With that being said, let's just dive into the decks and let's just start talking about them. So before I dive into the five decks here on the list, as you see here, Nia Humans ekes out the fifth position. There are a bunch of decks that currently are viable in standard. There's about 29 to 30 of them, I think, that are all currently above 50% win rate, making a lot of your options, uh, you know, definitely viable just in case you don't see the deck you're currently playing doesn't mean it's not a good deck um you know a couple decks that are that were just squeezed out by nigh humans would be like rural aggro mono red aggro um i still think there's uh some mono black control players out there that's still a fairly good deck even though it lost me to massacre so it's definitely a very uh interesting standard that there's a lot of decks out there that people are playing even with such a limited card pool certain decks may be kind of similar in one way or the other but still nonetheless this is a uh, this deck here is definitely a great deck to start out with in the top five. Uh, I think this one's just slightly above 56% overall uh, win rate in standard, which, you know, like I said, makes it a very good deck to play. Um, you know, as you see here, this is a deck that's kind of existed in standard prior to rotation. Uh, it did get a couple new upgrades from, you know, Dominar United. Uh, outside of that, a lot of the cards are cards that have existed in standard, like I said. Um, the one new upgrade that I think has gotten better with the Ban Amidoc Massacre is Guardian and New Benelia. It's a two drop, two, two with the enlist ability that you can tap a creature that could attack. Um, and then you give its power to Guardian and New Benelia. Um, when you enlist, you get to scry two, which helps set up the top deck, top card of your library to maybe get rid of lands if you don't need them. Maybe find an answer depending on what your opponent has on the battle on the battlefield. Um, so it's definitely good in that sense. And then on top of and then on top of that, why it's gotten better is because Mito Expand is now its discard ability becomes actually more effective in the sense that you can attack it aggressively with it. Um, and you can discard a card to protect it from spot removal spells or any uh, spells that say destroy. Um, though there are still things like drag to the bottom to still do minus X minus X. Um, so that's kind of the only thing that really removes this card. But still, nonetheless, this card is definitely very good. Um, and like it's a card that you'll see in any decks that probably splash white that are on the aggro side. Uh, the other card up is that we have is Anointed Peacekeeper. Another card that we got from Dominar United. This kind of, you know, takes place, you know, takes the place of Elite Spellbinder. It is a little bit of a stronger creature being a 3-3 instead of a 3-1. Doesn't have flying, though it does have vigilance, so it's a plus there. Downside is the tax ability of this card only exists when it's out on the battlefield, unlike Elite Spellbinder, which permanently taxes that card until the opponent plays it. Um, it's definitely the only trade-off that happens here, though the benefit is outside of just taxing the card uh, casting cost itself it also taxes any activated abilities of said card so if you target a planeswalker your opponent has to uh, also pay the two additional mana on top of that to activate those planeswalker abilities which definitely makes it a pretty interesting card um overall in the sense and like i said because uh Mido Masker is banned it's this deck is very creature heavy because the threat of you know a bunch of board wipe removal is non-existent currently in the format though it does exist it's just not as frequent one deck to just splash Mido Masker in it and kind of wipe the battlefield uh yet again this is a deck that benefits from a lot of cards you know we have Valorous Stance in the deck kind of like the Shieldred removal kind of thing uh Brutal Cathar of course is still on the list has another good way to get rid of creatures that may be in your way Adeline produces board presence by whenever you attack with a creature you get a, the one one soldier creature token and her power gets um plused up based on how many creatures are on the battlefield and then the top end of the deck kind of finishes that with helena and elena partners a card that just grows any creature on your side of the battlefield at the mean of your upkeep and put that many plus one plus one counters on it based on its power uh, we have Sigarda, which is another great card that just buffs all our humans by plus one plus one and on top of that if we have the coven ability um whenever she attacks uh, if you control three or more creatures with different power, we get to look at top five, or five, top five cards of our library. Reveal a human card among them, put into our hand, the rest on the bottom of your library. So just a good way to kind of fill our hand up. And then AO has kind of been like the dragon out of Kamigawa that's kind of seen a big presence in standard just because your opponent has to really exile it or you get a great effect of it overall. In the sense that if you don't really have too much going on and it dies, you can look at the top five, seven cards of your library, put any number of non-land permanent cards with total mana value four or less among them onto the battlefield, put the rest in the bottom of your library in any random order. Or if you have a decently large board presence, you can just give your whole team plus two, plus two across the battlefield, uh, which definitely is good as well. 
Um, the other thing too with this deck, it does have a mixture of legends as well as humans. So, you know, Gar uh, Plaza of Heroes is definitely a great card as a protection of land and a land that helps you fix your mana depending on what is happening. Uh, you also have Secluded Courtyard because it's a human tribal deck. You can just name humans and this card will produce any uh, mana of any color to spend mana to cast spells uh, of that type, uh, which is definitely very good. And it's only uncommon, so definitely budget friendly. Um, and it's just a mixture of, you know, uh, a couple planes and then some splash lands because this deck is essentially a mono white deck with a splash of some color for really the four drops in the deck but overall this is definitely a great choice if you're looking for something maybe a little bit different than mono white this is definitely another way you can lean uh it's not too expensive in the way that you can just kind of just cycle in these cards and you probably already have these cards if you already play mono white but still nonetheless a great solid deck that has seen some uh, you know resurgence since Meat Hook's been banned. So the next deck up on the list is a is a deck that I've dabbled in before, and that's going to be Esper Legends. This is a deck that plays essentially just legends um, that have just some additional benefits overall. Uh, it does have also roughly just under fifty seven percent win rate, fifty six point eight percent in a bunch of matches play. This is a creature heavy deck, but all the creatures have some sort of additional ability. Um, you know we have a mixture of cards from. Dominari United, as well as all these sets that have been in standard beforehand. The goal of the deck is just to play legend creatures and get those additional benefits. Uh, you know, some of the big callouts here in this deck in the early game is you get something like a Thali out, you start taxing what your opponent has on their battlefield. You can also get Elias, Ilkor, uh, which every time you play a creature or a creature you control enters the battlefield under control you gain a life and whenever a creature we control dies they lose a life uh that actually pairs very well like say, say something like a Jadar in the sense that at the beginning of our end step if we don't control a uh, creature with decayed we get to create a 2-2 zombie creature token with decayed so these two kind of work in tandem and then when the zombie dies we get to make our opponent lose a life so definitely good there um outside of that as well in the three drop slot we have our fiend here so whenever we attack in we can use our we can get we can connive essentially which is definitely very good um, just allowing us to give target creature plus X plus X based on how many uh, non-creature cards we discard due to the connive ability. Also helps us kind of dig a little bit deeper into our deck to possibly find an answer. Uh, we play that with tolls as well, and every time we discard a card due to the connive ability, we also get to put it underneath tolls. So if tolls dies, then we get those cards back that we discarded. So these two together are definitely very good. Uh, in the four drop slot, you have Shieldra just because it's a solid legend. Taxes your opponents whenever they draw. You gain life every time you draw. Works very well with Knive as well. Uh, Radabic is definitely an interesting card for an all legends deck because whenever our, our legends die, we get to create a 2 2 zombie creature token. Um, that's that's uh, not legendary in addition to its other types, so definitely good there. Uh, so, you know, essentially, if our opponent, like if we have this out and our opponent kills an Adeline, we get a 2 2 version of Adeline, though we'll also uh, have the benefit of it getting you know plus power based on how many creatures we have out so this is definitely a great card for the deck and itself also has wards so it's hard to remove unless they have some sort of board removal um and then on the top end of the deck you have ao as well just like you know the humans deck this is just a great top end card for this deck just because uh, it helps you kind of fill the battlefield back up or just makes your creatures that much stronger mana base is a little bit complicated just because it is a three color deck you have to kind of splash a lot of dual lands and also uh tap lands as well as pain lands to kind of make sure you have the mana that you need um, but other than that, this deck is definitely very good, has a lot of value. That's the one benefit of playing Legends. The downside of playing Legends, though, is you can only have one of them out on the battlefield at any given time. Uh, though, you know, depending on the situation, you could, oh, if you have a Ride a Bick out and you may just have an extra copy of, like, a Thalia, you could technically cast your second Thalia, kill the one out on the battlefield. Uh, one of them out on the battlefield, you get a copy of Thalia and then have a regular version of Thalia out on the battlefield and you're double taxing your opponent's non creature spells. And this deck doesn't play any non-creature spells so it's definitely kind of like it's kind of like you know interesting tricks you can do overall uh but still nonetheless this is definitely a very solid deck um when i did play it i i had a pretty good win record over it i can't remember uh what i had back in september when i actually played this earlier on in the you know the standard season overall but i do think it was probably roughly uh above uh the win rate that overall this deck has currently but still nonetheless it's definitely a fun deck to try out it is an expensive deck as i don't think there's a single uncommon in this deck outside of the basic lands everything else in this deck is a rare so it is kind of expensive so if you don't have the budget it's the one downside to the deck but if you have a lot of these cards um uh, it's definitely a good deck to try out. Uh, note, I just realized we do have the Alias Core uh, Sadistic Pilgrim as really the only uncommon in the deck, so I do apologize. But yeah, this is the only budget card, I would say, outside of the basic lands in this deck uh, currently.
Next card, next deck up on the list is going to be Selesnya Enchantments. This is another deck that's just kind of existed in the meta overall. Uh, I think this deck has been relatively on the higher end of the meta in you know, post uh, rotation. Uh, it's a great deck, you know, it has a lot of value. What we're trying to do here is just get a lot of things out on the battlefield relatively quickly. Um, just try to overwhelm our opponent with, you know, creating creatures that are just very, very big and they have to deal with them. Uh, Genesis Visitor is kind of like the one card that you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. C same thing with Kami. Uh, every time we play enchantments with either of these two cards out, uh, Kami will grow bigger and then we can also put counters where we need to. Um, the way this deck kind of gets over is you kind of combine some of the cards that were growing with like a Mashako's Reign of Truth and target creature gets plus X or plus one, plus one for each artifact in enchantment control. Outside of, I would say, Generous Visitor, the rest of the deck is enchantments um, that will stick on the battlefield. So it's definitely a card that at the right time could be very, very big. When it gets to the third chapter, we get the creature that is plus one, plus one for each artifact or enchantment control. So both very, very good. Um, and then yet again, you know, our another top end card of the deck is Katilda. It's a three mana star star that same thing based on the number of permanents you control that are spirits and or enchantments uh, itself, um, you know, is a creature that will have this ability. Or if it dies, we can disturb it from the graveyard and enchant a creature that we have on the battlefield. And on top of that, of getting the plus X plus X based on enchantments and uh, spirits we control, it will, the cre enchanted creature also get flying, lifelink, and protection from vampires. So I would say the protection of vampires isn't as good uh, just because there isn't a ton of vampires, though it does, you know, prevent a few things from targeting it. But still, nonetheless, this is, the, this is probably the cheapest deck in the format and i kind of understand why it has pretty good uh overall win record and a lot of games played just because it is more budget friendly um there is a, probably a little bit more of a budget friendly uh version of this list that doesn't play uh, a lot of the rares that you see here it doesn't play katilda and stuff it just really tries to go really small and, and plays a lot of enchantments to just get things out of your way uh from for you attacking but i would say this is probably where you would want to go to if you're playing the more budget version of the deck and you're looking for that little extra oomph i guess overall but still nonetheless this is definitely a great approachable deck that i think even with very limited budget you could still craft because outside of the lands like the aganjo the Buseyu, and the four copies of uh, overgrown farmland uh there really isn't a ton of rares in the deck i would say there's probably about 12 just looking at this real quick you have four harmonies four trans sciences and four katildas the rest of the deck is uncommons and commons so definitely very approachable compared to the rest of the decks on this list so this is something you're looking to maybe farm to get currency for this is definitely something i would suggest it's also very you know simple and straightforward on how to play there's nothing like you have to think about like various lines so this is definitely a very good deck to play overall in the current meta so the next deck up on the list is kind of like one of those decks i feel like a lot of people were like well since mono black took a step back with the band and up meat hook massacre we probably won't see a ton of mono black in the meta and i guess you know a lot of people forgot that there is an aggro version of mono black that was still cycling around in the meta before meat hook massacre was banned and it was still putting up uh very good results and mono black aggro is the second best deck currently in the format and i guess depending on where you look some people may say it's the best deck but i would say mono black aggro is still very good if you're someone who was playing mono black control but not having as much success this could be a good way to kind of deviate from the mono black control strategy and maybe go more into the mono black aggro strategy uh this is also a little bit on the expensive side the one downside i think with the meta overall there's a lot of decks at the top that are currently overall more expensive when it comes to uh wild cards and cards needed in order to make it work um but still nonetheless if you're just looking to shift from one to the other this is definitely not a bad uh deck to look at uh, it's overall, you know, pretty straightforward, right? You know, you had a pretty aggressive on the one drops. So you either play like Okiba Reckoner Raid or Cold Conscript, Evolve Sleeper, Cut Down is a great spot removal spell. In the true drop slot, you're looking probably at Infernal Grasp, maybe a Tenacious Underdog on turn two just to have the three two out and put pressure on your opponent. Even Tainted Adversary on turn two is very good because it has Death Touch. A two three with Death Touch is definitely very good there just because it. You know, your opponent may not want to attack into a Death Touch creature. Three drop slot, you got great Graveyard Trespasser to kind of eat things from the Graveyard that your opponent may want to try to reoccur. Or in general, you get to drain your opponent for one life and you gain one life in the process. You also have Liliana in the Veil, another great, you know, card uh, in the sense because depending on what deck you're playing on, she can come out and immediately minus two. She can also come out and immediately plus one and you can discard things like a Tenacious Underdog, which is something that we can easily get back. Um, or just some lands that we don't need in our hand and also punish our opponent's hand uh, in general, just try to make them discard maybe spells they don't want to. Uh, you know, definitely a great card for that. Then in the four drop slot is Shieldred. This is just a very solid body creature that can sit on the battlefield, drain your opponent slowly. We gain life slowly. It's a four five with death touch. Um, definitely a great card in general, though. I would say a lot of the decks that if you notice around the list are playing cards that hopefully 
deal with Shieldred, but still nonetheless, you kind of have to answer Shieldred immediately or the drains and gains will kind of take effect overall. And then the last card up, that's just a big Hail Mary punch to kind of finish off your opponent, hopefully, is like Invoke Despair. This is still a great card. Um, I feel like a lot of people kind of fell off on Invoke Despair, but still overall a very, very good card. And, you know, it it it's one of those cards that you get benefit no matter what happens. The best benefit is if they don't have a ton of things out in the battlefield and they only have to sacrifice one thing, you then drain your opponent for four life, you draw two cards. If they have a bunch of things out, it's still a five mana uh, three for one, essentially, uh, which is still very good. You know, hitting the creature, hitting a planeswalker, hitting an enchantment. Uh, makes it very good but like i said uh you know it, it has added benefit uh you know either way this card comes out um and for five mana in a mono black deck especially with a four black mana casting cost uh is definitely very playable and then the lands you know of course is like the one talking numa which then can get back like a liliana or a shieldred or a graveyard trespasser depending on the board state uh is still very good but still nonetheless this is a deck that performs really well uh, it's sitting at roughly a little over 58.5% uh, win rate in the meta. Um, it's one of those decks I would say would see is probably going to be on the up and up just because, you know, it's still a very effective deck with other decks in the format also being aggro and aggressive. This deck also plays a lot of stuff to maybe disrupt what your opponent's trying to do, especially in those aggro decks. So this deck is definitely very playable and definitely a good deck to maybe shift from, like I said, if you were playing mono black control before and just looking for a deck to play now. And the last deck up on the list is kind of one of those decks I feel like a lot of people were like, you know, happy that rotation was happening and, you know, things were leaving the format. But, of course, at the top of the list is we have Mono White Aggro. Uh, you know, Mono White Aggro is the probably the deck that benefited the most from, you know, the banning of Meduk Massacre. Just because it, it's a deck that plays a bunch of creatures and Meduk Massacre was kind of like the anti-Mono White Aggro card, essentially, in the format. Um, and this is one of those decks that just benefits from just, you know, having your opponent play a bunch of spot removal because a lot of the cards in the deck outside of, like, essentially Hotshot Mechanic all benefit, um, you know, in one way or the other, right? Like, Hotshot Mechanic doesn't really do too much instead of just being a one-mana 2-1. Two, one. But, like, Hopeful Initiate, you let that grow and get too big, then it becomes a pain to get rid of, and then you can start removing counters from things and destroying artifacts and enchantments. Uh, already seen this already a couple times on the list. Guardian of Benelli is a great card for this deck because now it gives Mono White a way to kind of hopefully find cards they need to kind of continue that pressure. Um, and then having Indestructible is great as well. Uh, you know, the other benefit here too is because this deck plays like Sarah Paragon, you know, whatever you discard in the early game to kind of keep this card alive, you can eventually just replay with Sarah Paragon unless you discarded a Sarah Paragon to do this effect. So, you know, that ability is still very good, you know, overall. Uh, Anointed Peacekeepers in the three drop slot. We have Brutal Cathar in the three drop slot, and we have Adeline in the three drop slot. So, I mean, very low curve deck, uh, very puts a lot of pressure out very, very quickly. Um, you know, it's definitely super effective of what it does. And I would say the only thing out there, if you were looking to maybe make any adjustments to the deck, is it's just a matter of do you want to play one Aganja or do you want to play two? You know, that's that's really the big thing, I think, with this deck. But overall, this deck is just super effective. It's sitting at 59% win rate. Um, you know, it's... I don't know if it's like the Mono Weight of Old and how powerful Mono Weight of Old was, but it's still just a super effective deck that if you if everything gets out of control very, very quickly, you get like the perfect one, two, three draw. This deck is definitely very hard to deal with in that sense. Like if you set up like a Guardian of Benelia and you have like an Adeline out, like Guardian of Benelia is like a, becomes like a five, three that you're just swinging for it over and over again. Your opponent has to deal with. And if they don't deal with the one ones, those one ones start adding up and Benelia gets bigger and bigger combined with all the other creatures in the deck is like a nice one, two punch that the deck has, but still nonetheless, I mean, these are the decks that are currently, you know, at the top of the meta. Like I said, there are other decks that I didn't list here, you know, doing the top five is usually the easiest, but you know, typically there are decks that are like at 53%, 54%. I mentioned like mono red gruel aggro or just over 55%, but they were just behind Naya Aggro. So there are decks, depending on what your budget are, that you can definitely look at. Uh, I get all these deck uh, percentages and win rates from untapped.gg. It's the website I use. It's a little add-on that I have in MTG Arena. Um, they, they don't sponsor the channel, but I just figured I'd mention that just in case you were wondering where my source was. Um, the other thing, too, I just want to mention out here, if you've lasted this long, is I am doing live streams here on the channel every Tuesday and Thursday after, after I get out of work, roughly around 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, my time. Uh, so it's something I'm doing here. So if you want to come and hang out as, you know, either play decks like this, or I just kind of play test and mess around with other deck ideas. I think the other day I did a shrine deck, which was definitely very interesting, but unfortunately I don't think it really works overall in the current standard, but still nonetheless, if you like the video, hit that like button definitely helps out a lot. If you're new here, you want to post new videos like this one here on the channel, hit that subscribe button. 
until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Just want to give a special shout out to the channel members here on my YouTube channel. You can also become a channel member yourself down below the video, hitting that join button. It definitely helps out a lot and I just appreciate you guys for your support.